Now I'd like to welcome Bill Kondo. Bill is a consultant in the local Columbus market where he focuses on building websites and his main background is PHP. Please join me in welcoming Bill Kondo. And he has to type his password in, so I'm going to stand here awkwardly to help him out. Thanks, Bill. It was a short password. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, as Warner said, I'm a, I'm a PHP developer. Man, it is bright up here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I am definitely the imposter, whoever was making that uh, talk earlier. Uh, I feel like the imposter right now, but uh, are we good to start back there? <clears throat> so uh, who's heard of the, the Phoenix Project book or read it, right? So <clears throat> uh, for those of you who did not raise your hand, this talk's for you. Everybody else can go maybe have another drink. Um, so, for, as Warner said, for those who do not know, I'm, I'm the organizer for the PHP group here. Um, whoa. Um, so, I'm going to talk about the Finnish pro project book. We know that it came from, uh, or was inspired by the goal back in, uh, was it 1984, I believe. Um, the, the book leaves you with the three ways to uh, think about DevOps practices. The first one was systems thinking. So it's all about you know, the flow from left to right through, through the organization and uh, moving quickly, keeping stuff from bouncing back and forth uh, to, to not slow stuff down. And it really emphasizes the full system as opposed to one portion of the system. The, the first part of this, the, the systems thinking, is probably like where we're already kind of focusing in, in some ways. Um, but what we don't maybe do is, is the, the uh, amplified feedback loop. And that's, you know, the more feedback you can get and the quicker you can get the feedback back to the developers or the operations people, uh, the less we're going to make the same mistake again, right? Or the quicker we can fix it. So we want the shortened uh, feedback loop as much as possible. Uh, the, the third uh, way of DevOps is the continual exper experimentation and learning. Right? So it's all about building the habits. We want to do the right thing, and we want to do it over and over again. Uh, it's about you know, testing, the, taking the risk, and finding a better way, constantly being looking, you know, is there a better way to do what we're doing today? It's all about the repeti repetition. Uh, you know, it's better to train for one hour, five days a week, than for five hours, one day a week. Right? The repetition comes into play there. So we want to build muscle memory for doing the right thing. So some of the, the points out of the book, um, they, they talked about important, or, excuse me, importance, autonomy, and resources for IT, right? So we, uh, we all know if anybody's worked in IT, uh, that's probably most of us here already, you cut any three of these things out, and you put us under another part of the organization, you don't give us what, the resources that we need to do, obviously we're going to have problems getting things done. We all have made that fight. It's best if we work together, right? Dev, Dev and Ops together. If, if we're fighting each other for resources or we're fighting against each other politically, not going to be good. The work in progress. Do you know how much stuff is on, on, the, on your queue right now? So in order to figure that out, we need to uh, know how much effort each thing is going to take so that we know how much more stuff we can add to the queue and how quickly we're going to get it out. We have to know what our most limited resource is, right? So it doesn't matter if the second person in your pipeline for, for development can do 500 things an hour. If the first person is doing 100, you're going to do 100, and vice versa. We want to minimize the things on that constraint, right? So we need to itemize. We need to, to document and standardize many of those tasks that that constraint has. And we eventually want to make those things reproducible that somebody else can do those things, or possibly even automate it, right? Like, that's the best case scenario. That constraint, the busier the constraint is, the longer it's going to take things to get done. It's not incremental. It multiplies because everything in the pipeline is then going to take longer, right? So it's going to be two or three X. If we're not consistently learning, we're falling behind, right? We all feel that. We all have to keep up on stuff day to day, all the new tools, all the new ways of doing things. There's an interesting uh, part of the book, the way that they've categorized all the different tasks that we do all day long into four different uh, tasks. So the, they, they categorize it as business task, IT task, maintenance task, and the unplanned work. And I don't know about everybody else, but the unplanned work is the part that kills me. So if, if we can do the things in this pipeline to reduce that, we can now focus on the other three. 
The feedback helps planning. Again, the more that we can get feedback earlier in the stage, uh, you know, the, uh, earlier in the process, the less frequently we're going to repeat that same mistake, and we can move on and make new mistakes, right? And then we'll solve those. Man, that went quick. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm a developer posing as a DevOps person, so but I'm more than welcome feedback. Uh, thank you very much.